Why is it hard for other people to see what I am seeing? And how come they can't see that this is the best option? I mean, this is the right move. How can we not agree on this? Today, we will try to answer these questions. And not only we help you make choices that suits you, but also we will help you understand why those other people make those choices. In order to do that, we will rely on Carl Jung's cognitive functions. Carl Jung wanted to categorize how our decision-making process works to narrow the field. Yes, every person is unique. But if we want to create a working system, narrowing down will reduce our search a lot. Everyone has a perceiving function which helps us gather information and a judging function which helps us make decisions. People gather information in two ways. First, by directly relying on their senses to perceive facts. And secondly, by relying on their intuition to predict based on patterns. People who rely on their senses are great at having a focused and detailed information. Their senses are keen and won't miss any facts. While people who rely on their intuition are great at figuring out the big picture. They can connect different information to each other and create patterns. But gathering information alone doesn't exactly help us make a move. We should also have a decision-making mechanism. And our decision-making mechanisms also divided into two categories. First one is deciding rationally. People who think before making a decision usually incline to make decisions based on what is possible. It helps them make safe decisions and can secure their position. On the other hand, others make decisions based on their gut feeling. They are great at reading the mood and make high-risk, high-reward moves for what they want. This will help them change the tempo of the game. Speaking about tempo, if you haven't watched my previous video about MBTI and Tempo, you should also check that out. It'll also improve your overall understanding of this. Back to topic. Now, we have two functions that helps us gather information and two functions that helps us make decisions. But it doesn't end there. According to Young, these four functions also have two versions, an extroverted and an introverted one. Extroverted functions are the ones we are using when we are active, because they are based on external factors. And introverted functions are the ones we are using when we are inactive because they are based on internal factors. During a cycle, we usually act and then rest and act again. We use extroverted functions when we are acting. And when we are resting, we rely on introverted functions. That's why every person has a preferred extroverted an introverted function. Because we also need a perceiving information gathering function and a judging decision making function, if one of them is extroverted, other should be introverted. So what are these eight functions? They are extroverted intuition, extroverted sensing, 
introverted intuition introverted sensing extroverted thinking extroverted feeling introverted thinking and introverted feeling most people have two dominant functions which determines their function stack there are many theories about function stacks some believe only your two dominant functions matter others believe you need four functions that covers everything but we use eight function stack when we are training our recruits in the resistance army we tested and educated them in all of them so we can assign them to correct tasks first let's start with my dominant cognitive function which is extroverted intuition also called ne extroverted intuition is about noticing possibilities because of that we called it the ideating class extraversion part will keep you engaged with all the moving parts and intuition will help you notice patterns we constantly tested them to notice patterns and make connections that way they become perfect at reacting to enemies moves recruits who excelled at the ideating class were either positioned as the visionary or the champion depending on their second function next is the other perceiving function which is extroverted sensing also called se Extroverted sensing is about catching every detail. We call the class we teach it the experiencing class. Extroversion part will keep you engaged with the moment. And sensing will utilize all your senses to notice every fact. We created environments where they can use each of their senses in isolation. This help them hone and utilize each of their senses when the time needed. Recruits who excel at experiencing class were either positioned as the doer or the performer. Also depend on their second dominant function. So let's move into extroverted judging functions. First in line is extroverted thinking also called TE. Extroverted thinking is about making rational decisions based on outside factors. The class we teach extroverted thinking is called the structuring class. Extroversion keeps them aware about outside factors and thinking helps them make decisions based on rationality gave them constant puzzles and problems for them to solve. That way they started making methods to overcome similar problems as well. Recruits who excel that structuring class were either positioned as the commander or the supervisor, which is determined by their second dominant function. And alternative to extroverted thinking is extroverted feeling, also known as FE. Extroverted feeling is about making decisions based on what the collective feeling is. That's why the class that teaches extroverted feeling is called the connecting class. Extroversion helps them focus on others. And Feeling helps them understand their emotional state. We gave them tasks which only can be done by a group of people that forced them to consider each other's emotional state in order to unite the group. Recruits who excel that connecting class were either positioned as the giver or the provider, depending on their second function. Let's move into the introverted functions and start with introverted feeling, also known as FI. 
introverted feeling is about making decisions with your internal compass. Your compass is determined by your values. So we call the introverted feeling class the valuing class. Introversion helps them observe their inner state. And feeling helps them understand feelings and values. In order to train them, we gave them cases where they have to judge people without concrete evidence that forced them to make decisions with their inner compasses. Recruits who excelled at valuing class were either positioned as the healer or the composer. Second introverted judging function is introverted thinking, also known as TI. Introverted thinking is about making decisions with your internal knowledge. Your internal knowledge is your processed knowledge you collected. And the class we teach that is called the reasoning class. Introversion helps you make a pure internal judgment. And thinking helps you rationally process the information you gathered. In order to train them, we cut off their access to others and start asking them questions. That forces them to either use their accumulated knowledge or force them to give reasonable answers based on those. Recruits who excel that reasoning class were either positioned as the thinker or the craftsman, depending on how they perceived their information. Now let's move into the introverted perceiving side and start with introverted sensing, also known as SI. Introverted sensing is about being aware of your own state. By being aware of yourself, you can help yourself become better. So we call that class the stabilizing class. Introversion helps you focus on yourself and sensing helps you check yourself. Meditation is the best way to train your introverted sensing. It's about isolating yourself from disruptive thoughts and just focusing on your senses. Recruits who excelled at stabilizing class were either positioned as the nurturer or the inspector, depending on whether they decided rationally or emotionally. And finally, the most mystical function of them all, the introverted intuition, also known as NI. While Extroverted intuition is about noticing external patterns. Introverted intuition is about noticing internal patterns and making predictions about the future. What makes it mystical is not knowing where exactly those internal patterns are coming from. That's why we call the class we teach it as the seeing class. Introversion helps them notice these patterns. And intuition helps them interpret them. In order to do that, we put them into situations where we know all of their senses. And make them guesses about the objects or pictures we are holding. Recruits who excelled at seeing class were either positioned as the counselor or the mastermind, determined by their second function. Urkara, you keep saying that second function thing, but how do we know our second function? That's where the function stack comes in. Function stack is your order of preferred functions. Okay. Let me show you how to find your function stack. 
your most dominant function is your first function. Mine is extroverted intuition. If you still haven't figured out what is yours, think about which resistance army class would you excel in. That will be your dominant function. Your second function is your cover-up function. It's the function that anything your dominant function lacks. For example, my dominant function is extroverted intuition, which is an extroverted perceiving function. That means my second function should be an introverted judging function, which leaves me with either introverted feeling or introverted thinking and I scored higher in introverted thinking. So my second function is introverted thinking. Once you got your first two functions, rest is decided based on those. And most of the time, you rely on these two functions. They are also called your ego block by socioeconomic students. But that topic is reserved by our next video. Anyway, in case of you need to use others, we will cover them as well. So, there are four ways to act, right? Extroverted perceiving, extroverted judging, introverted perceiving, and introverted judging. And since our first two functions cover both extroversion introversion and judging perceiving angle, our third and fourth functions will cover the other two. If you are an extrovert, your third function will be an extroverted one. Or introverted if you are an introvert. In my case, my third function is extroverted feeling, since I already have a thinking function as well, which is an extroverted judging function, which I am lacking. Also, your third function is considered your secret agenda. Shh. And the fourth one will be the last way to act, which in my case, introverted perceiving function. And that is introverted sensing for me. Okay, now I'll give you another secret. Mirrored functions help each other perform better. What do I mean by that? That means my extroverted intuition benefits from my introverted sensing, and my introverted thinking benefits from my extroverted feeling. Also, it works both ways. My introverted sensing benefits from my extroverted intuition as well. I can see more possibilities if I have an internal stable framework for patterns. And I can make more rational decisions if I can organize the information I get from others. Also, I can build more stable frameworks if I can see all the possibilities. I wonder how many of you realize that every training method we use isolated the supporting function, so we can see the true potential of the function we are testing. For example, in introverted intuition test, we isolated it from its supporting function extroverted sensing by nulling all of their other senses. Ok, back to main topic. What about the remaining four functions? Since we have all the four ways to act, remaining are your non-preferred alternative functions. We only use them if we cannot use their preferred versions. Since our fourth function is the one we use the less, we are much more likely to use its alternative as the fifth function. For me, it's introverted intuition. Since my fourth function is introverted sensing, and it is the other introverted perceiving function. My sixth one is the alternative to my third one in the same sense, which is extroverted thinking for me. My seventh is introverted feeling, which is the alternative to introverted thinking. And my least used eighth function is extroverted sensing, 
because the function I use the most is extroverted intuition. Now, I wanna touch on one more topic before we go to the designing part, which is dimensionality of functions. So, what is that? Dimensionality of function is how we can improve the performance of our functions. There are four dimensions, which are experience, norm, situation, and time. If our functions can benefit from experience dimension, that means if it is a situation we are familiar with, our functions work much better, and every function can benefit from it. If our functions can benefit from norm dimension, that means if it is a purely use of that function, it works without a problem. Other than our fourth and seventh function, every other function can benefit from it. It might seem odd right now, but I will explain in a minute. If our functions can benefit from situation dimension, that means our function can adapt to different situations and still works effectively, and it is resistant to change. Only our ego, which is our first and second function, and id block functions, which are fifth and sixth functions, can benefit from it. And finally, if our functions can benefit from time dimension, that means our function can not only resist to change, but it also can predict change and make adjustments beforehand. And only our first and sixth function can benefit from it. But Ukara, I don't get why are those numbers are chosen like that. To understand it, we are gonna rely on our old friend MBTI. An example will help it make clear. First, write your MBTI type. For me, it's ENTP. Time dimension only affects my first and sixth functions, which are extroverted intuition and extroverted thinking. Think about it. I am an ENTP, an extrovert, an intuitive, and a thinker. That means those are my most comfortable functions. For situation dimension, I add my second and fifth functions, which are introverted thinking and introverted intuition. For norm dimension, I add my third and eighth functions, which are extroverted feeling and extroverted sensing. They are not thinking or intuitive functions, but at least they are extroverted ones, so it is still acceptable for me. And my last remaining functions can only benefit from straight-up experiences, because they are both introverted functions and requires me to use sensing and feeling. It's really hard for me to use them as an ENTP. That's why training your fourth function is crucial to help your first function. Unless you train it, it won't get better on its own. Also, because of that, your seventh function is your weakest spot. You should avoid engaging with your opponents on your seventh function and force them to use theirs so you can easily defeat them. Whew. It was a long ride, isn't it? Now, let's get into the fun designing part. Best design tip is, make sure that your players can play the game while staying in their two ego block functions. Maybe eventually using their third or fourth functions as well. For this, we must first split functions into two. In order to let them use their extroverted functions, you must introduce direct challenges. Direct challenges are the challenges you face that is in the moment. Indirect challenges, on the other hand, are the challenges that are 
either about past informations or about consequences that can affect them in the future. If you want to know more about challenges, I also have a video about them as well. Anyway, first let's look at how to introduce them in games. First, establish how you enable the four main moves that can be used in your challenges. Extraverted perceiving moves should allow your players to gather information from the outside. For extraverted sensing, introduce ways to increase either quality or quantity of information sources, so they can figure out the perfect timing. And for extraverted intuitives, give them tools to increase or change the possible outcomes, so they can change the course of the game. While Extravert judging moves should allow your players to make decisions based on extraverted factors. For extraverted thinkers, your game should have a consistent logic, so they can structure a working system. And for extraverted feelers, your game should have ways to interact with other players or different pieces so they can manipulate their mental states to their advantage. Oh, and to understand their mental states, I will leave another link in the description. Back to topic. Introverted perceiving moves are about interpreting the world with internal information. For introverted sensing, give them ways to track their own situation so they can build a system for dealing with possible problems. And for introverted intuitives, help them with process of elimination, so they can predict what is going to happen. Finally, introverted judging moves are about figuring out your inner compass. For introverted thinkers, Make sure some options are better than others. Small, hard to notice and situational advantages are extra satisfying for them. And for introverted feelers, make sure that they have options for fulfilling their inner needs. To get a deeper understanding of inner needs, we have to discuss Enneagram. But we have to wait a little bit more for it. As long as you gave your players these options, they will build their own unique spin to it. So you don't have to worry that much. Yes, mostly they will be using two of these systems, but they will eventually will use the others when it's the right time. Whew. Let's summarize this huge pile. We have eight different cognitive functions. We use all of them, but with different levels of preference and success. We always use an extroverted and an introverted function one after the other. Also, one of these functions is a judging one, while other is a perceiving one. Every function has a pair to improve itself. There are four dimensions of these functions, which teaches us how we can use them. We should design our games with cognitive functions in mind, so our players can feel at home. Hello! If you reached this part of the video, thank you for your support and best of luck on your journey. What do you think? Do you agree with what I told you? or? Which class would you excel at? And could you write your 8 function stack? And if you liked this video, I know you are smart enough to like and subscribe. By hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel, you can show me that you want more videos from me. In our next video, we will cover another take on cognitive functions, which is socionics. 
Also, if you want me to dive into another subject, just let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching.